polite if you're currently in college first second or third year or if you're currently a working professional but feeling fairly bored in your job if you're unemployed and looking to get into open source this video is probably for you this video is around a google summer of code roadmap of sorts for 2026 in case you want to participate in gsoc next year this is probably the right time in case you want to get in deterministically a lot of times you can get in through luck but if you want a more clear actionable and definitive path to get into gsoc this year this video will hopefully help you with that. We'll get into the video. Uh, the video is around a GSOC 2026 roadmap. Uh, what should you do in the next six months in case you want to get into one of the orgs contribute to open source getting to GSOC this year. To kick things off, uh, what is Google Summer of Code? Uh, high level, if you don't already know this, I'm sure most of you do. Uh, but a quick intro is uh, it's a program by Google in which you get sponsored by Google, by which I mean Google pays you some amount of money that starts from I think $750 goes up to $3,000 based on how big your project is uh, to contribute in not Google necessarily but in an open source org. There are many open source orgs that comes every that come every year. Uh, FFmpeg for example is one, Chromium is one, DeepMind is one, Rocket Chat is one. Um, these are the popular ones that you will see come every year uh, and you get paid to contribute to their open source projects. Um, this is good because you get some open source proof of work. You get an internship of sorts. Uh, you basically can spend your summer doing something. You get paid for it. And most of all, um, GSOC is a good uh, metric for higher IQ, I think. Um, in case you get into GSOC, uh, a lot of time, Lux sort of plays its part. But uh, most of the time, the people who get into GSOC uh, have a more actionable, direct path to get a job eventually. I'll share more proofs eventually um, in the slides. But high level, if you're able to get into GSOC, that's a good uh, stepping stone of eventually getting a job, be it a remote job or otherwise. Uh, why should you do GSOC? Um, if you're in your first, second or third year, it's probably the best internship you can do. It is remote. Uh, you can work from your home. It's around three to four months. It pays decently well. You can probably get equal, equally paid jobs or, or internships during a summer, uh, but probably not ones that pay as much or more than this. Uh, it's a good reality check if you are a working professional and if you want to see, uh, are you actually learning things or know things outside of your comfort zone? And it also provides you uh, a direct entry to Super 30, uh, which is a smaller cohort of on-site program that we run in Noida. Uh, the third one is not as lucrative of a point, debatable probably. Uh, but first and second, if you're a working professional or a student, uh, I think are decent points to why you should get into GSOC. Uh, last year, from the 100 steps cohort, that's cohort three, 30 people got into GSOC. Uh, overall, around 50 people got in from the community. Uh, I did a pod with, I think, 27 of them. Uh, the podcast is on YouTube. Um, these are a few faces. Uh, what did people do? What all did they get in? Um, but generally, a few of these eventually came to uh, Super 30. I think 12 people from this batch of 30 people are in our offline program in Noida. Um, and they're the, very obviously the first ones to get placed. Uh, whenever I'm posting a referral opportunity, I don't really remember if someone came in through GSOC or otherwise. Uh, but, you know, very high probability that the ones that get selected eventually um, are the ones who came in through GSOC and not through the traditional route of getting into Super 30. Um, Another good example uh, is these three people. Uh, all three of them are on campus. Uh, and there she got into cal.com this year. There's another guy called Pallav, I think. He was from GSOC as well. He also got into cal.com as an intern. Um, Amrit works at Crack Devs, used to work at uh, cal.com before, intern at cal.com before. And Raj recently got a job in a UK-based remote startup. So just basically as a high level. And these are, I think most of them are in college right now. Um, Amrit, I think, dropped out. This guy is in college. And this guy, I'm unsure of, probably is in college as well. Um, so as you can tell, uh, it's a good filtering criteria, not because he got into GSOC. It's not just the fact that it provides some shininess in your resume. Um, it's that you know how to work remotely. Uh, so it's easier to crack remote jobs. All three of these have remote jobs now and all three of them pay well. I think he makes $2K a month. He makes 5K a month or something like that. Um, and I think Raj got in for $2.5K a month um, <coughs> remotely from India, mostly as college students. I think all of them are 2021. Um, so hopefully uh, that gives you a brief idea of why other than the other motivations to get in, um, why there's one more motivation to get in, which is uh, for some reason, if you get into GSOC, um, it's easier for you to get a job after that. Um, this has been sort of the high level journey of um, a lot of people, not a lot of people, like a decent bunch of folks that came in Super 30 as well. Uh, usually when you're getting into GSOC, you don't need to know much. You need to be decent at a tech stack. Um, if you're good at a tech stack or good enough, um, you can now with AI more easily contribute to uh, an open source org should probably not use AI uh, to contribute to open source organizations. The code bases are usually fairly big. You can probably use AI to vet your code, make it write tests, uh, but generally try to write everything yourself. Um, and <clears throat> slowly, I mean, basically the point of this graph is at a fairly minimal skill level. Um, 
if you're actionable enough um, and if you're lucky enough, you can get into GSOC and the journey from there sort of becomes easier. For me, the journey was very similar. Um, I got into GSOC twice and then I got a job and then I got a remote job. Um, and learning mostly happened after that. Um, basically, if you feel like you're a beginner dev or a junior dev and it's hard to get a job, um, getting into GSOC is slightly easier because most senior devs are not really competing um, for getting into GSOC. It's not lucrative enough for them. GSOC is a good fi filtering criteria for IQ. This is not because people who get into GSOC have this on their resume. It just is. I don't know why. Like, I don't know what the reason is. Um, but as I said, a lot of referrals that happened in Super 30 as well happened for GSOC people first and then people who came through the traditional route. Uh, IQ and accountability are two things that companies are optimizing for. Um, I think everyone can write code now. It's about who has higher IQ, who can move faster and who is accountable enough. Uh, and, you know, basically taking uh, responsibility on the code base. When I say accountable, I basically mean you can just throw a task at them and they're able to do it. Um, these are the two things that now matter a lot uh, other than your skill level as well because a lot of skills can be uh, offloaded to an AI as long as you can understand its code. Um, your IQ and accountability is what helps. GSOC is a good filter for that for some reason. God knows why. Um, but it's very obvious to me now, okay, people who get into GSOC, probably DSL, you know, competitive examinations if, if you are uh, good at code forces, that's traditionally considered as a good metric for getting into a Google uh, or, you know, big tech, uh, probably for similar reasons. Okay, if you're really good at code forces, if you're a if you have a really good rank there, uh, then there's a high probability you'll perform well in your job. And the same is sort of true here. Uh, if you have gotten into GSOC, there's a high probability you'll perform well in your open source job or remote job. Um, if you're participating in GSOC, you probably are better than 90% of engineering grads from the country. Uh, that's primarily in one because not a lot of engineering grads are have the skills right now. Um, and GSOC sort of very easily filters you out from them. You might have um, a lot more skills compared to most of the engineering crowd from the country, but GSOC is a good uh, way to prove that. Um, and hence, if you lie in this category, you're probably in the better pool of people to uh, get hired from, um, not just because it is in your resume, but because the two month experience or the four month experience sort of gives you a lot of on ground actionable job experience, um, which might be harder for you to get uh, through an internship at a random job or, you know, a low paying internship or a free internship, or maybe you're not even getting an intern. Um, in those reasons, or in, th in those cases, uh, GSOC sort of helps you get in the door uh, and, you know, gives you some sort of an internship experience in your resume. Um, I've done it twice. I primarily did not need it because I went to a good college. If I did not do it in 2015 or 2016, my job outcome might not have changed because I have I got a, a campus placement eventually. Uh, the things that I did over here gave me a lot of, uh, you know, hands-on coding experience. Uh, what I did get, one thing that I remember very uh, obviously that I got out of this was, uh, I was able to get some sort of a testimonial from Mozilla um, that I contributed to Mozilla. Um, that was one good thing that came out of this. Two, uh, I counted both of these internship experiences of four months each as a remote job experience in my top talent interview. Uh, so it was easy for me to get into the remote job sort of a landscape uh, because I had two remote internships in decentish companies, maybe not Gambit, but Mozilla is, you know, a decent thing to have in your resume as well. That's where it eventually helped me um, in my campus placement and probably in yours as well. Uh, it's not going to help you too much because campus placements may, a lot of times interviewers don't know what GSOC is. Um, and a lot of times they're not looking for hard dev skills. They're just looking for your IQ through DSA. Um, you can find my proposal on this link. Uh, I'll share a better link at the end if you want to look at more proposals. Um, but the learning from this slide is one, it gives you a lot of hands-on coding experience. Two, it may or may not help you uh, with, you know, uh, a badge that you get by the end of it. <clears throat> there are two types of GSOCs. There is luck GSOC, there is effort GSOC. When I say luck GSOC, I basically mean a lot of times you might not have the best skills, but you are able to get in. Um, this usually happens early. So in my second year, um, I was able to find an org that did not have a lot of contributors. It was a new org, as you can see, it only came in 2015 or 2016, it didn't come after that. Uh, and hence, not a lot of people were already contributing to it. Um, it is usually found after the list is released. So uh, these orgs are sort of hidden gems of sorts that you can find uh, where not a lot of people are contributing because they're not famous orgs. Um, and try pressing them and contributing for the last three months. Um, this is what happened for me here after my First month of contributing here, it was fairly obvious I'll get in because they had three projects that they were selecting from and I was one of the top contributors um, and I was also talking to the maintainers. So that was my luck GSOC. When I say luck, I just mean I did not have enough expertise in JavaScript or TypeScript back then. Um, but that was the project that I had to contribute to, a, a JavaScript sort of a canvas project. Um, so a lot of learning happened on the job. Um, I was not expected to have a lot of pre-existing learning. Um, this happens fairly often. Probably 50% of the projects are luck-based GSOC projects, which means there are probably better people to get selected, but they're, they're just not contributing to that specific org. The other one um, is a slightly better way 
to get into Google Summer of Code, which is um, you actually are interested in a specific organization. Uh, good orgs here include Chromium or FFmpeg or Mozilla or OpenCV. Um, this actually shows you're picking a very difficult project, a, a project that has been used very often, like Gambit was used by a professor in a specific company um, versus um, this thing. Uh, I mean, most of these orgs are usually production systems that are being used by a lot of people like Chromium, for example, is what <clears throat> Atlas, the browser that came out yesterday by OpenAI is based out of. Uh, same is true for Comet. So if you're contributing here, the expertise of contributing here is a very obvious tell if someone at Atlas or if someone at Comet wants to hire you. Uh, these are the small places where it helps to contribute to the source code at the very base level. Uh, this will only happen if you're actually interested uh, in computer science. So it's mostly interest based because there's a lot of competition. There's a low probability you get in um, purely based on, you know, uh, the number of contributions. What really helps uh, to get in here is your depth of knowledge when you're contributing to the source code of, let's say, Chromium or FFmpeg. Uh, most project requires, you know, some low level language. Uh, for example, if you're contributing to Chromium, you need to know about C, C++. Uh, I think FFmpeg is written in C as well. Uh, if you're contributing to Firefox specifically, uh, a lot of it is written in Rust. Uh, if you I contributed to a fairly, you know, separate project of Mozilla, which was thankfully um, React and a bunch of JavaScript. Uh, and Zulip also is an application, so probably, you know, a, a bit above. Uh, OpenCV again would be a little low level. Um, if you're in college, contributing to these projects is a very good tell or something that helps you immensely eventually. Uh, why? Because there's something that everyone's doing, which is full stack um, or DevOps. You're going one layer below it uh, and contributing to libraries that a lot of these companies depend on. Um, Netflix, Unacademy, for example, uh, would heavily depend on FFmpeg in some form or fashion. Um, so if you have good expertise here, um, you know, you are a more, not easier to get hired, but if that opening comes of a low level C++ engineer uh, working on Chromium, um, then there are not a lot of people who've contributed to Chromium. Or if they have, they have enough job opportunities eventually, uh, like automatically. Um, so they're not really actively looking out. So it becomes easier to get hired over there. So a little more depth of knowledge, but a lot more rewarding if you're getting a effort-based GSOC. The timeline of Google Summer of Code, um, this is probably the right time. You're not late if you're starting to contribute right now. Um, by November, it, I mean, this is the same sort of a philosophy we're following in our school as well, uh, which is by November, we're trying to make sure people are good in a specific tech stack. That's one stack for us, JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, backends and frontends. Um, could be something else for you. Python is the other popular one, Java is the third one. So Java, Mern or Python, if you're good at. Uh, then at this point, you can start to pick organizations. Uh, probably pick two organizations uh, because there's some probability that the org that you're contributing to is not going to come this year. Um, and hence, it's a good idea. Two are good enough. You don't need to contribute to more than two. If you're super unlucky and both of them don't come, then your contributions in these two will probably help you get you know into a third org. Um, find one or two organizations probably by 15th of November. Um, talk to the maintainers, set up the code base, understand the issues, maybe solve one or two. Um, here to here is where most of the work sort of happens. Uh, you are picking up issues, you'll see a lot of competition, you'll see a lot of people contributing from, you know, <clears throat> various countries, mostly from India. Uh, and the motivation of most people is to get into GSOC basis. I think it's pretty obvious to the maintainers as well, it's pretty obvious to the students as well. Um, so think of it, I mean, unfortunately, like a competition. Um, but if you pick difficult issues to solve, um, then it doesn't really remain a competition because not a lot of people pick those issues. Um, by first of this by for february uh, contributions should probably continue um orgs are announced so hopefully the org that you're contributing to comes if it doesn't or if it's very obvious to you you won't get selected because the maintainers don't like you for some reason or there's a lot of competition sometimes there's nepotism in orgs as well they'll select their own students or you know people they know um so if any of these factors are not in your favor, then maybe pick a different org uh, and, you know, basically hedge as much as possible at this point. Um, and Feb to April, again, keep contributing, start writing a proposal uh, and then hope for the best after April. Uh, keep contributing probably, you know, until the orgs are announced um, because uh, I think most of them, it's very fairly ad hoc process of selecting students and a lot of people are uh, contributing or a lot of people are uh, proposing to get into an org. Uh, so it'll be eventually fairly ad hoc and number of contributions, kind of contributions, if they remember your name, um, is when it becomes easy uh, to get in. If you want a list of proposals, uh, which again is something you should only focus on in the last 10 days, uh, a good list can be found on blog.sgslabs.co slash gsoc. It has around 10 proposals every year from students who get into gsoc. Uh, you can my, find my proposals as well if you scroll down to 2017 and 2016, I think. Um, 
and i have a video on this it's a fairly old video but i think the knowledge sort of continues which is uh, how to write a good proposal for google summer of code it won't matter too much if you have contributed then an 8 to 10 page proposal works if you haven't contributed then maybe a little bit more explaining the architecture of what you're going to do uh, maybe picking the project also helps you have to understand specifically in this case when you're proposing for an idea is that idea high priority for this company or not um i have contributed to a bunch of orgs on youtube uh, there are videos that are publicly available uh, so you can if you want a starting point of a few orgs you can probably go through these videos uh, so you'll understand high level <coughs> how to set up these orgs locally and how an issue is solved the first one is processing um, it comes almost every year it didn't come in 2015 it didn't come last year uh, other than that for the last 15 years it's sort of coming consistently um, this is the title for the video you can search on for this on youtube uh, second one is you see a little more low level uh, a lot of the code is written in c++ um, it is a uh, it's a meeting app like google meet uh, comes most years i think it came last year did not come last last year uh, issues are fairly simple uh, this video sort of covers one of them in fair detail um, the third one is matrix which is a p2p messaging app like signal basically uh, and most of the code is open source they have a mobile app a web app the back end so you can pick which org or which specific repo to contribute to here is a video where i took harnoor sort of through the project um, end to end in a i think 40 minute video um, will give you again a brief idea of how to contribute to a project and then um, this is the latest one deep mind they only came last year um, and i think three people from um, th the 30 that got selected through us uh, got into deep mind uh, amrit was one of them i forgot the other two um, but i have two videos that i released exactly when the orgs got released this year deep mind was a very interesting one for me okay they came into google summer of code uh, it's really hard to get into an ai lab uh, by content i mean just unless you have <clears throat> a phd or if you've written papers um, but if you're contributing to their you know sdks or client side code it's slightly easier to get in um, these videos will probably take you through uh, i think the javascript sdk or the typescript sdk um, so another one probably to look at uh, in case you want to take the slightly more separate route of new set of organizations the other ones are fairly common they keep coming for years now matrix did see and processing have been coming for 10 years deep mind came last year for the first time probably come this year as well uh, so feel free to look at these four videos in case you feel like you want to see the end-to-end -end process of uh, contributing if you want more there's a full playlist that i have probably has 15 to 20 videos now um some of them are alpha videos some of them are contribution videos uh, probably all you need in terms of you know uh, passive learning is um, after you've learned things passively or understood what needs to be done there's a lot of effort that you have to do yourself and i think no one can help you um, to get into gsoc uh, or if they do help you, you know, eventually you'll fail your gsoc uh, so it's a good idea to start contributing after you watch these videos and you know do a lot of effort on your side <clears throat> that's it that's all i had for uh, how can you get into google summer of code 2026 a lot of times people watch these videos and they procrastinate and around feb is when they start contributing which is also fine a lot of times it works out i think if i talked to 30 people last year probably 10 people got in after the organization list came out so as i said a lot of it is luck a lot of it is luck based a lot of it is iq based a lot of it depends on how quickly you can sprint towards the end uh, but if you want a more definitive path then probably this is the time to start contributing in our school uh, this is the time where we've sort of reached not the best place with most of the students in our school understand a little bit of back and a little bit of front end um so now is you know when we're making them contribute a little bit to some orgs and see whether they, whether, whether they got selected, get selected or not um, they're in their first year so low probability they get selected um, but that's the sort of path that we're following in our school um, if you're in college right now probably i'd follow a similar path with that we'll end it i'll see you guys next one bye bye